Hi, this is Todd from Custom 3D Stuff, and welcome to my build of a complete, full-scale, extremely accurate Han Solo Frozen and Carbonite prop. So this is the box kit that I offer. It's 12 CNC routed wooden pieces, and it includes all of the most difficult cuts that you'll need to do for the project. The long pieces are cut in half, so you'll have to reconnect them. They're shortened for shipping. And what makes this project difficult is that the box tapers from back to front and bottom to top. And then the cutouts are a little complex too. The first thing I like to do is lay everything out and make sure everything lines up so I know where everything goes. So what we're doing here is, the, is uh, covering the holes. So these are eight holes that hold the eight panels, uh, the Volvo panels to build the Han Solo. And the Valva panels are injection molded, something that I offer too. Um, I offer almost every part, uh, not the actual Han pieces themselves or the electronics, but I think everything else that you need, um, plus a couple trips to Home Depot. So the wood panels cover the holes. I'm scraping out the glue so there's no glue at the seams. Um, Next time I build one, I'm going to put a longer board because there's a seam halfway down and I put these boards only over the bottom two and then the top two holes and I think one solid uh, block would be better. Here I'm countersinking the holes and then pre-drilling the holes into a two by four and then screwing the screw all the way through. So the top of Han, which is at the top of your screen right now, is about two inches narrower than the base. So make sure you have the shorter piece at the top and then the longer pieces at the bottom. You can use little wedges or little pieces of wood to put on top of the two by fours to even it out. You want the top and the sides to be flush or else you'll have a big seam that you'll have to cover later. So here I'm also countersinking holes for the screws that go in the corners so I can patch over them later. On this build I only use screws to assemble the box at the edges and I think it might have been easier if I used like a brad nailer or a staple gun and glued the edges down too. So I think I'll do that next time. It might go faster and be easier. So I turn the box around and I'm now screwing in the bottom. The bottom is the wider side. This is a edge support that I'm putting all the way around. So the front of the box and the side of the box can stay fixed instead of, uh, you know, flopping around. So the same thing, I'm countersinking the hole in the MDF with a larger bit and then screwing a smaller bit into the 2x4 and then using a screw to hold the MDF to the 2x4. I think for the top and the bottom and some of the edges, definitely the top and the bottom you need narrower than a 2x4. So I, I ripped it to make it thinner or found some small scrap pieces of wood. So these are glued in place. And I'm clamping so I can get the side of the box flush with the front of the box. So when I screw it, it'll hold it in place. But the clamp helps me align it. On this build, the top and the bottom of the box, we're not covering over with planks of wood. We're going to be using the vacuum-formed pockets. So the main box is half-inch MDF. And then I'm using quarter-inch plywood to form like the back panel that the carbonate and Han gets mounted to. So I just used different pieces of scrap wood that I had laying around, uh, patched together. It doesn't have to be neat because it's gonna be covered with carbonate texture after.
once this is down, if you want, you can put crossbeam supports as well. This is an optional step, but I recommend it, especially if you have a tool already. This is a router, and it's using a roundover bit, which it's like a half inch radius, so the board gets rounded out at the corners. Uh, you can just sand down the corners with like an orbital sander or palm sander, or if you have access to a shaper or a router like this, um, it's a good trick to, to round out that corner there. I'm doing it on the sides as well. I didn't do it on the openings of the top and the bottom, but I think that I'll do that next time. Where the pockets go. I just used the palm sander on that part later. So here I'm sanding down using this palm sander to just clean everything up. Some spots the front panel was like sticking out over the edge of the side panel. And here I'm using spackle. You can use Bondo, um, any kind of patching material to cover over those openings, like all the edges where the boards meet. So right here is something uh, that I ended up changing later, but there's this like puzzle piece design to connect the top and the bottom halves. And that seam shows through, so I had to patch it up later. Uh, a trick that drywallers use is like to use a piece of tape. They make the special drywall tape to patch over seams. Um, so I ended up using just green uh, painter's tape to cover over that seam later. I'll show you that later on, but do it now so you don't have to sand it back down. And take your Han cast parts and line them up. The set I had was split for shipping also, so it has to be patched together. But here's where they are all laid out together. I'm just trimming up the edges because I know the, the edge of the cast parts has to blend into the carbide texture I'm going to build. So any bit of fiberglass that was sticking up, I, I cut away just to make sure it could fit in also. And now here's a big, big time saver that a lot of people skip this step. The carbonate is flush with the frame. So a lot of people build that up with tons of spackle or tons of Elmer's glue or wood glue, but you can just use wood because you don't need half inch of uh, carbonate texture. So just use spare wood and, and fill it in to like raise the, the whole front of Han upward or forward a quarter of an inch. And that will save on a ton of material and a ton of time. So I just laid down those wood pieces. I'm now using liquid nails. It's a construction adhesive to attach the Han pieces to the frame, like to that raised board that was glued down. And you can fill the back of Han Solo with foam, expanding foam, if you want. That might give it a little bit of extra strength or maybe it'll uh, you know, make it sound more solid. But it's not necessary, but it, it can definitely help. So I'm spreading the liquid nails on all the parts that are going to touch that raised board. And then I'm matching it up to how it lines up looking at uh, reference photos. Those little boxes are weights that are holding Han down to the board. So it's like applying pressure for the carbonate. And then I added some more weight to, to hold Han down to the board. And here are some screws just to fix it in place and just apply more pressure while the liquid nails dries. You can back these screws out and remove them later um, or grind them down, which is what I ended up doing for this build. They were sticking through the back and it was kind of a hazard, so I grinded them out. So this is spackle that starts out pink and turns white when it is dry and ready to sand and ready to prime and paint.
I'm just spreading it out and then smoothing it out. And the carbonate texture is not very busy. It's pretty smoothed out. So I'm trying to kind of keep it as smooth as I can um, while still making it a little bit interesting. And you can see how I'm just putting a thin layer because I've raised Han up with that quarter inch board. So it can just uh, kind of flush, run flush with the edge. These are the pockets. So these are vacuformed ABS sheets that have you know, flashing on the edge that needs to be trimmed off. Well, that should be trimmed off before you mount it to the inside of the box. So I'm doing it with a bandsaw. You can use it with a rotary tool or a Dremel or a handsaw. And these pockets are optional. A lot of people don't include them. It depends how your Han's on display. They just might not be visible. And there are three on the bottom, three on the top. Here I'm using a hot glue gun to kind of tack it in place before I fix it in place with the liquid nails. You can see that piece of wood right there. That was what I was clamping and screwing in place to give it that edge support. This pocket had a little crack in the corner. It was split along the edge, so I used some CA glue to do the repair. Super easy, just a couple drops and squeeze it together for a second or two. This is the liquid nails that I'm using to secure the pockets to the frame. He was grinding down the screws off the back. You could also, of course, just use shorter screws. So this is the next day. Carbon and texture has dried, and I'm going over some of the areas. I realized that dry decks will shrink in areas where it's thicker. So I had some gaps in the plywood, especially right here, um, that shrunk. So I went back over it a few times throughout the build to uh, to fill that in. Um, so anywhere I didn't like the texture, I didn't like the pattern that, that came out, I was going back over, and then I went around Han again to blend him in to the texture more. Here I'm patching over all of the holes, the screw holes. Pre-drilling a hole in the feet and placing them where they go. And I'm attaching them in place with liquid nails and screwing them from the bottom cleaning up the edges. So patching the seams between the different pieces in the Han sculpt I have. I'm using epoxy sculpt or magic sculpt. There are a few different brand names. Um, get yourself a uh, it's two part epoxy clay. Um, I like the brand Epoxy Sculpt and comes in really small packs. And you just grab equal parts and fold it into itself a bunch and mix it. And it cures very, very strong. And also you can use water to smooth it out before it cures. So I see some people not taking their time with this step when they patch the seam. Really go through and you don't want you want you don't want it uh visible. So 
this stuff only takes like an hour or so, I think, to fully harden, and then you can go back over it later on in the day or the next day, and really utilizing that smoothing effect that the water provides, where you have a little dish of water, you can dip your finger in there and keep rubbing it on there, and feather it out on the edges, and you'll really be able to patch it so you can't see it. It might take a couple applications, but... Here I'm spraying paint just to see what it would look like, and then uh, in the areas that I noticed problems, I like went back over it with the Drydex or epoxy sculptors. So here's where you can see that puzzle piece. So I'll go back over that with tape. Still not happy with this, so I'll go back over it a couple more times with more epoxy sculpt. Same with the neck. Sanding down all the high points and removing any streaks I don't like. Get that smooth look going. This is more epoxy sculpt. If there are any holes in the casting or really thin places, you can also patch it over with this. I believe on the final coat of this, I textured it with a paper towel, so it just kind of looked like the same fabric of the clothes. I mixed up some glue here with water to make like a thin sealant and I went over the whole carbonite texture with this sealant. I think I used too much but I took some off. And this helps finalize the carbonate texture blending into the Han pieces. If you get any of this on the frame, wipe it off with like a wet paper towel or else it won't look that nice when you paint. And I kept applying paint, even though I wasn't ready for the final coat of paint, to see how the texture would look, see how my patch job was doing.
can really put a lot of pressure in there when your finger's wet to smooth out and feather out the edges. There were some gaps where the pocket attaches to the frame. So I went over with dry decks and filled those gaps. And once it was dry, I switched back to sanding. This is a sanding sponge, knocking down all the high parts. And then I went back over with sandpaper. Moving over to the panels and greeblies, a lot of the greeblies come uh, in metal and some of them come in plastic and they, they come out of the super fancy 3D printer on sprues like this, like an old model kit. Um, I'm using just regular snips here, but if you have flush cutters, you'll be able to completely remove the sprue so they'll lay flat. Uh, and make sure you hold onto the part when you cut it off or else it might fly across the room. Once they're all removed, you can paint them gray or silver or brass gold color uh, or darker colors. Uh, depending which reference picture you look at, they look different colors. So pick what you like for colors. And do this before you put the metal plates on, which I'll show you in a minute. But for panel number two, this little tab that's in the biggest window has to be partially removed. So I'm using a rotary tool here to to cut it off um, it's about half about halfway down the circle but again look at reference pictures to line up and cut it exactly where you want and I always forget to do this part at the beginning but you need holes cut in that side just for the electronics to go through so here I'm cutting holes in the metal plate which I didn't realize you needed to do. I made a mistake. So if you have metal plates already before, like if you have metal plates in 2021 or earlier, uh, there won't be holes in it. But in the future, I'll be pre-drilling these holes for everybody. The holes are for the bolts that go through the U-clip heatsink. You will still need to drill the holes through the Volvo panels for the bolts to go through for the U-clips. You also have to drill out the spot for the posts for the handles. It's pretty easy to just uh, drill where the pre-made holes are, and then that'll make it wider for the handle posts that you can then glue in place. So here's the metal plates with the holes drilled in it, and then I'm screwing the nuts onto the bolts through the clips. And there's different uh, head styles, so three different head styles. There's like a Phillips and a slot and a pan screw so look at the reference images and match them up as needed and then these wooden planks are to keep the panels level because they're angled and if you have glue that's you know i'm using e6000 contact adhesive and sometimes it slides down and slips if you have kind of too much glue so i have it uh flat just in case have it angled back just in case so they can't slide. And I've included metal rings and metal cups. And also on the website at Custom 3D Stuff, on the product listing for the metal Greebly pack, it'll show you how many of each type are, are on which panel. So the rings are hollow and the cups have a back to it. And you can go through the reference pictures also to 
uh, figure out which one goes where, and then match up all the greeblies and the angles and the rotations of everything to get it as accurate as you want it to be. And less is more with glue, so you don't have to clean it up after. Here's all the eight panels with all the metal parts. Panel one has a lot more detail. So there are these white plastic panels that cover the openings and then the electronics. I lined up this white acrylic piece where it can only fit one way. I mean, it can go in multiple ways, but the holes will only line up one way. So make sure you have that lined up properly. Uh, it'll look wrong if you have it wrong, where the holes just aren't lined up. You'll know. So I'm putting the decals on the different plastic panels. The dot one goes for panel two, and the grid one goes for panel one. You will have to drill, drill holes, uh, depending if you're using an electronics kit or what you're doing for that. I think right now most people are using Fettronics. So I drill through the grill and the panel so that your potentiometer knobs can fit through. At the time this build was made, um, the frame for the seven segment displays from Fettronics were a bit too small and a little uh, inaccurate compared to the ones that Jason Eaton made. So I got some from him and I swapped out the frames. It was a pretty tight fit, so I scraped using a knife to like scrape open the opening a little bit wider. And then I'm gluing, gluing the printed perfboard frames in place. And they're holding those four seven segment displays for panel one. And then panel two gets um, the second set of lights. And there's lots of different decals and uh, little dots, colored dots and things. So here I'm gluing on the plastic reblies. There's a couple different types of those, so if you want you can match them up exactly which type goes on which. These dots are little vinyl circles, adhesive. You can get the plastic greeblies from me in gray if you don't want to paint them and you want and you're happy with the gray color because the the nipples all the little there's like 30 little circles those are supposed to be gray so you can get them in that gray without having to paint them if you pick that color when you order so these panels themselves are old volvo dashboard instrumentation control panels like mounted upside down face down and for the longest time, people were molding and casting them in resin, but I was able to make an injection mold of the part. So they're uh, much less expensive and much higher quality. Um, you don't need to sand them or anything or fill them like with the 3D printed ones, and they just, they're super nice. Here's all the little lights. They all have their own little holder and it comes through the white plastic that snaps in place. And 
There's all the panels in order of how they're going to mount onto Han. So the top right one goes by his left ear. The bottom left one goes by his right foot. I took one of the uh, toy capsules from the grocery store and put some hot glue in that and kind of made a like diffusion lens to spread out the green light. These are the little um, LED diffusers. They snap through that plastic and then you feed the wire. And this electronics kit's from Fettronics. It's uh, like about 120 bucks and you get lights for both panel one and two pre-programmed to blink the way you need. That's how it looks all wired up. And then I'm just going to hot glue the capsule behind the main panel. Those knobs get changed out for the actual Greeblies. So back to the box, I went over the wood and I primed everything. And this is the automobile filler primer. And it'll give us a nice uniform finish for when we coat it with paint after. So this is uh, you know still bad, so I think I'm going to show the tape trick now. And you can do that in all four corners as well as the halfway up the sides. So I sand down wherever it was ugly. There's there's the green tape. So that just covers over the I don't know why I didn't think of this in the past, but this is the first build I've done that, and I'm definitely going to do that on every other build. And all the corners and everything. And it just comes out so nice when you're done. Pick the colors you want. This is like a dark steel, maybe, or a, I think this is soft, flat, soft iron. Yeah, Rust-Oleum, soft iron, flat iron for the frame. And I think flat, soft nickel for the carbonite, and then the hero panels painted with aluminum color. But sometimes people paint the whole block and carbonite all one color and that is fine too and some have more contrast between the colors and some less I really just think uh, pick out the colors that you like that you're happy with so I taped off the edge to make a nice edge when you're painting and the panels and the real prop were mounted with those same pan head screws. So we're drilling holes here. Through the little tabs. So those panels can be mounted with those screws. Um, mounting the panels on there, connecting panel one to panel two with electronics, and lighting it up. And that's all there is to it. Almost all of the parts that you need for this build are available in the carbonite section at custom3dstuff.com, which is my website. Thank you so much for watching my build. I really hope this inspires you to build one of your own. It is not as complicated as you might think, and hopefully this video shows that. And if you're not handy, maybe you know a buddy 
who can come help you do the build. We all hang out uh, on Facebook in the Han and Carbonate Builders group. There's also a forum called the Dented Helmet where some people post pictures of their build and of course on the Replica Prop Forum.